would I want to beat up my valve train for 20 horsepower for no reason? Hey, what's up everybody? Michael here from CorvetteForum.com. Today I'm back at American Heritage Performance for an interview with owner Coley Heimlich about certain LS and LT build scenarios where you'd actually want less horsepower and specifically why a lower lift camshaft is better for your valve train. Here's the full interview. My name is Coley Heimlich. I'm the owner of American Heritage Performance. Uh, we recently conducted a camshaft lift test here on our, uh, our in-house Superflow SF902 dyno and I uh, just wanted to recap a couple of things about it. The engine for the build is a, one of our HP442 LS7s that we build quite a few of. The original camshaft we had in this engine was a mild duration camshaft, but was a high lift camshaft. Customer's request was basically he wanted a stock-like drivability camshaft uh, for a 442 displacement, but he wanted a lot of lift to take advantage of the Archangel heads. So we set him up with about a 680, 688, 686 lift camshaft. As time went on, he had this engine in his car for probably about a year, maybe two years. We ended up breaking a rocker arm over that time period, a yellow tear that we had in there. We changed it out with another one, ran just fine afterwards, didn't have any problems. He ended up having a, another part of the car that went down, so he ended up pulling out the engine uh, so he could do some engine bay detailing and some other stuff like that. So when he pulled the engine out, he asked me if I wanted to see it, go through it. So I said, sure, I'd love to. So he brought it over, we dropped it off. We uh, ended up sticking it on the dyno just to get some base pull numbers out of it, make sure everything on it was healthy, looked good. Made the same exact power that it made when we originally dynoed it, so it turned out really, really well. And what are the driving characteristics of how you set it up originally? So this this thing drove like pretty much like stock. I mean, this this was essentially a stage one cam for a 442 displacement. Obviously, when you go from a 427 to a 442, it's a bit of displacement difference, mm -hmm. and duration of a camshaft will get eaten up by displacement. So a stage three camshaft, let's say in a uh, 427 is going to be like a stage 1.5 in a 442. Mm -hmm. The larger your displacement you get, the smaller that camshaft is going to be to that engine. So this engine, this cam was specifically designed for the 442 and was designed to be basically a stage 1 cam, a baby cam, essentially a stock replacement type cam. He wanted good power, good torque, which naturally comes with a 442. Wanted to be able to rev the thing up to 6500 RPMs plus without any issues. So all that was accomplished with what we, what we originally gave him. What started this whole thing with looking at the difference in lift was when we put it back on the engine dyno, even though it made the same horsepower, and I think this is maybe 30,000 miles later, mm -hmm. 25,000 miles later, it made the same horsepower, what we noticed was the drop off at peak horsepower was substantially steeper this time around, which to me suggested we're probably running into float issues, weak valve springs. When we tested a few of the valve springs, indeed, that's what we found. We found some of the pack springs had lost some pressure, and I think we were actually below where we should be, and we were actually starting to see float at the very top of the graph, which would cause it to nose over very quickly after peak power. When peak power is achieved, normally race guys will shift three to 500 RPMs past peak power, so it puts them back in their power range. Oh, okay. So a lot of guys think they go, they shift at peak power. When you're racing for serious racing, you shift past peak power. That means that the valve train needs to be stable well past peak power. If you're aiming for a 400, 500 past peak power shift point, RPM shift point, and let's say you miss shift and you go six, seven, 800 past, if you don't have a stable valve train, you may run into some serious issues at that point. So the idea was that we wanted to restore his valve train stability past peak power. And we did that when we, we talked to him about it, we covered what we found, mm -hmm. and we ended up telling him we want to swap out the springs and we want to retest. He approved it, put a set of new packs on there, retested, continued all the way past, well past peak power. You could rev the thing to 7,600 RPMs, even though it stopped making power at around 65. It, it was just rock solid straight across all the way up to 75. Gotcha, so this is still your original cam setup. Still the original cam setup. You just repaired it so it's back to fresh. Correct, so basically refreshing. So then he comes to you and says, what if we put a, a, a bigger cam in, right? He, he actually wanted the same cam, he wanted no maintenance. Oh. He didn't want to change valve springs every 25,000 miles. Oh, okay. Was what he said. So basically that's what he wanted was if we're going to be potentially breaking a rocker every 25,000 miles, changing springs of every racing. 20... Of racing. Of racing, yeah. Right. This is right. a hard driven car that's right. it's getting raced. It's more of a grunge racer, more a fun racer, he's not racing for money. Right. So we wanted to see if we go with a lot lower lift cam that's going to equal he gets a lot better valve train longevity and just a better feeling more secure better peace of mind engine what would we lose gotcha and that was what the test was so we got with cam motion they were nice enough to hook us up on a camshaft that was about 60 thou less lift with everything else being the same okay everything else in the engine remained the same the only thing that we changed was that lift wow and we went down from about 686 down to about 626 
And six, these numbers may sound big for LS1 and LS3 guys, but in the LS7 world, a 620 lift cam is a, it's, it's a low lift cam okay. in the LS7 world. In an LS1 world, you're usually maxing those cams out around 620, so that's a huge lift cam in LS1. LS3, you're usually going to about 640, that's so 620 is still a pretty big cam in an LS3. Right. But on an LS7 with a 1.8 rocker arm ratio, it's not unheard of to see 700 lift cams in these things. Oh, wow. 620 is where we feel that the valve train doesn't get compromised as far as geometry goes, where the nose starts getting too far over the tip. Obviously, we're running roller rockers, so that's not really a factor, but we want to kind of include this if somebody wasn't running roller rockers. Right, right, We know right. that a 620 lift cam is a good cam that doesn't sideload the valve very much with a stock pad style rocker arm. Gotcha. So that's why we decided on that. So, so what did your experiment, how did it net out? It turned out great, actually. Uh, I was suspecting we would be around 25 horsepower difference. Mm -hmm. It ended up being a little less than that. We ended up, the high lift cam would equal 20 horsepower more mm -hmm. and 10 pounds of torque more than our low lift cam. Gotcha, but um, from what range? Uh, honestly, if we look at the graph right here, everything on the graph pretty much remained the same up until about 4,800 RPMs. And that's where they divided. And from there, the, the high lift camshaft started carrying a lot better all the way past. Peak power was roughly the same, but we did make peak torque 100 RPMs higher on the high lift cam. Mm -hmm. And we made peak power 100 RPMs higher as well. Okay. So it carried a little bit better with the extra air that it brought in. So really, 20 horsepower, 10 pounds of torque, isn't the end of the world for a guy that's not money racing his car. I mean, would I want to beat up my valve train for 20 horsepower for no reason? No, absolutely not. Right. I would say if the guy is not racing for power, doesn't need that extra 20, and right. just wants a nice hot rod, go with the lower lift cam. Any engine is gonna neglect it, is not gonna run forever. Right. But let's say that somebody takes care of it, a high lift camshaft is gonna need springs every 20,000 miles, it's gonna have some rocker arm wear, it's gonna need to be inspected. So I would say a high lift cam's going to do a number of things. One is it's gonna wear the springs out quicker. The other factor is valve side loading. Uh, roller rockers negate that, mm -hmm. but if you're running a pad style LS7 rocker arm, you're gonna get valve side loading, which is gonna equal guide wear. So anything over about a 640, 630 lift camshaft with mm -hmm. pad style rocker is gonna start pushing that, that valve into the wall of the, into the guide. And you're gonna start getting this oblong wear pattern of that valve guide. Oh, wow. So that could then create later on down the road, take, requiring to take the heads off, rework them again, uh, go through them, put new guides in, make sure the valves are in good condition, and that whole thing. So I mean, you if you're running a high lift cam, you may have to take the heads off, you may have to rework the heads again, you may have to change springs more often. A low lift cam is just going to be a lot more, less stress on the valve train, mm -hmm. on the guides, on everything. And would you have the same advice for guys that are more into the cruising scene that Cars and Coffee chop, you know, they love Absolutely. the chop. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. The chop is, has nothing to do with the lift. That's oh, the other okay. thing. So if somebody's after sound, that's all duration and overlap. Okay, great. So zero to do with lift. You could run a 600 lift cam and still get that same wicked chop. Right. So I would say if a guy seriously is, is just going to Cars and Coffee, just a, a weekend hot rodder, man, go with the lowest lift that you can go with on that camshaft. Gotcha. Would those folks uh, encounter similar, you know, 25, 30,000 maintenance issues if they're not racing it? Uh, if they're not living up, you know, in that upper end of the RPM? It's thing. a good idea to always check with aftermarket springs. Right. Every 30,000, that's kind of my thing, just to check one or two, pop one off and just check them. But we've seen low lift camshafts with a good set of aftermarket springs, no basic, no loss of pressure 30,000 miles later, which means you really didn't even have to check them. You could have just left them on. Oh, wow. So, yes, I would say that um, as, as time goes on, a low lift camshaft is going to save you the headache that comes with a high lift camshaft. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome.